Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And we're gonna have a look at a puzzle today that has been recommended quite a few times. Actually, I had a look at it a few weeks ago and I thought the rules sounded perhaps too complex. And given that even what I think are fairly straightforward rules can sometimes be uh, misunderstood, yesterday being a case in point, actually. Um, I'm a bit nervous sometimes about putting out puzzles with slightly confusing rules, but we try and write them as carefully as we can to avoid any possibility of misunderstanding. We've done that again, and I'm going to have a go at this today because uh, it just keeps getting recommended. So we are going to see what happens when I try this puzzle and with, whether we can make clear the rules. I suggest, as always, that you stay with the video until my explanation of the rules, which sometimes makes them a little clearer for people. Um, obviously there may be the odd occasion in which it makes them less clear, but we try and avoid that as well. Um, now, first of all, uh, there is, oh yeah, there's some, at the, as I'm writing, there's some sort of problem with one of the puzzles in the, uh, in the Valentine's special bit of the app. So we'll let you know more about that tomorrow. Um, it is worth updating anyway, always. Um, but... The apps are all available. They feature all kinds of brilliant puzzles. Um, we've got Killer Sudoku, a bit like today. And um, there are various line Sudoku, etc. Do check them all out. And of course, there's our Patreon, where there's still time to enter Rift Clown's brilliant competition uh, interactions. Fabulous series of eight line puzzles. And what else is going on? We've got... Um, we've got our merch and Sven Sudoku pad. But the first link is to this 6x6 six six puzzle. Now, I sometimes say with a 6x6 six six puzzle, how hard can it be? Um, the word we're getting in the recommendations is this one might not be that easy. So we shall see. We've got to put 36 digits in. So let's do the rules. Place 1 to 6 in each row, column, and marked 3x2 box. That is normal for 6x6 six six Sudoku. Digits in cages sum to the clue in the top left corner if given. Well, we've got a 1 there. We've got an N here. N represents a number that must be deduced. Build regions such that all regions from sizes 1 to N are present exactly once. So we've got to create our own regions that are different from the 3x2 two, two boxes. Cage totals also indicate the size of the region in which the cage resides. So that, I think we can infer very clearly that a cage is wholly in a region. Every cell is in a region. That's in the puzzle. Orthogonally adjacent regions must have sizes of opposite parity. So that's even or odd. So an even cage must always be a butting an odd cage and and there's more orthogonally adjacent cells in different regions must be of opposite parity so within a a region of size six you might have a number five and that number would have to be if it was sharing a border with a cell in an a in a different region that cell would have to be an even number, but its region size would have to be an odd number. I mean, that is a few rules, and I think you can probably see why I was a little nervous about introducing this to you guys to solve. But that is what it all means. Give it a try, because apparently it's a very good puzzle. And, you know, as long as we can understand the rules, then, then we'll get used to them as we go, I figure. So let's get cracking. Well, we've got a cage with a one in it. Nothing in the rules has stopped me putting a one in that. And that is telling me that that is a region on its own. I'm going to get the pen tool out here and box in that region. Because, yeah, the... the Cage total also indicates the size of the region in which the cage resides. I've coloured it orange because I'm sure we're going to have to parity colour. 
I'm a bit concerned actually. Are we parity colouring boxes, regions, or or individual cells? Uh, that could be a weird conflict as we go. I'm not sure. Okay, the, the next thing actually is something I th should have thought about already. How many regions are there in the puzzle? And I think, I think we've got some very clear clues to that. Every cell is in a region. So there are clearly six by six is 36 cells in this puzzle. And that must represent all the regions from sizes one to n. Well, happily, 36 is a triangular number. Just as 45 is the triangular number for the number nine, which is why it's kind of the secret in a nine by nine Sudoku. So 36 is the one before that. That is the triangular number for eight. And I think that is telling us that we have regions from sizes one to eight. If you add up all and all, so if you count one cell for the region of size one and two for the region of size two, all the way up to eight, you will get to 36. Therefore, we're basically told that n is an eight. That's because n represents a number that must be deduced. And it's regions from sizes one to n. So this cage adds up to eight and it's got a one in it. Oh, okay, that pencil mark is not going to be helpful. In fact, even this is a bit dangerous as it goes across boxes. But okay, right, I've made a decision. I'm going to colour based on regions, on, yes, on region size, not on individual cell identity. And I'm going with blue for even and orange for odd, which is therefore the one is still right. These cells are in an eight cell region, so I've made them even. Now, I mean, I am left, I mean, you look at this puzzle now. We had, it was clear there were few enough clues when we began. There are almost no clues now. There are just these shapes of cages. What on earth do we do with those? Okay, yeah, I see. Every, each of these three cell cages has three different digits in it. I mean, that wasn't actually specified in the rules, but they're within a box, so that's clear. The rules didn't need to specify that. However, one, two, and three is the minimum total for a three cell cage with different digits in. So one of these cages adds to six and one of them adds to seven. We do just have to discount the very slender possibility that either of these cages could be in the same region as that cage. But I think we can see, oh no, 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 no. It's not a slender possibility at all. This region could be an eight. This could be in the, this could be in the eight region. And join up with this. Um, I could see that these two regions can't join up with each other because that would require a minimum of far more than eight cells. And even this joining up with that just fails because that's nine cells to get them joined up. But this joining up with this, okay, if that was all one single blue region, okay, that wouldn't work because these two cells would turn orange and would form a region of two, but that would be abutting a region of eight. So that shape wouldn't work. So... To have an odd number of cells sequestered up there, it would have to be that shape. Now, could that be an eight? I want to get to the position where the two three cell cages are, a seven, are in a seven and a six region, but I have, to, I have to either eliminate this possibility of eight, exactly like I've just drawn, or actually find out that it's true, which is not impossible. Um, that would be an eight. It would have got a three region stuck on its top side. 
then all the cells touching this blue region would be orange. Okay, so I'm going to sketch them in. Even that one would be orange. And these would then... Ah, oh, no, okay, that won't work because of this cell, interestingly, which would have blue cells there and there. What could it join to? Well, nothing. If that was orange, it can't join to that cell or that cell without getting joined onto the one. I think we can treat it, because of this rule about orthogonally adjacent regions must have sizes of opposite parity. Anytime two oranges sit next to each other, they have to be in the same region. So if that grew either west or south, it would grow into this and it would break the puzzle. So, okay, so what I'm claiming is that that is the only way the eight, this could be an eight and thus connect up with the eight at the top of the grid. And it would leave this three, which would have to be odd. Yeah, that's okay. And then it would leave this cell in an impossible quandary because it couldn't just be a one. We've already had the one and it would have to grow out and it would hit the one. So this is not an eight. This is either six or seven as a size. Um, and this one is either six or seven as well. And we've just proved they, they must be different. Okay, that sort of marking is absolutely no use. But they both have one and two in, and either three or four. So that's what my normal marking would be. Now, are we meant to work out which one of them is a seven and which one is a six? That seems a very hard task. Are we meant to do something with Sudoku and think about fives and sixes? Are we meant to think about these cages? Uh, the simple answer is I don't have a Scooby-Doo what we're meant to do at this point. We've got a seven and six. I'm going to give them colours of randomness just to think about them. So, okay, this one is six or seven, so it's got to grow, and it mustn't hit this cage. No, that's not true. It could if it's a six. And maybe that's the point. If it's a seven, it's got to grow without touching another odd cage. But, I mean, that would work. It seems very possible. This would be a six. I don't, have we got anything to go on here? Oh yes, of course. We've got the last rule. Orthogonally adjacent cells in different regions must be of opposite parity. These cells are all in a different region from the one. So they're all even. They're all in even sized regions. Well, that looks like it makes a difference. We get a flower growing in the grid. Now what's happening to this? If it's in a blue region, because it's a six cage, it's definitely joining on to those cells. Oh, if it's in an orange region, because it's a seven cage, it's got, got to grow out past these blue cells. I see a reason why... No, that doesn't quite become impossible, that shape. Oh, and these individual cells are also, by the, by the last sentence of the rules, of opposite parity to the one. So those individual digits are two, four, or six. Right, these two can't be two because they're in a region that has a two in a cage. Um, There's no rule, obviously there's no rule about digits not repeating in a region because we've got an eight cell region and a seven. Um, okay, what about this cage? If this was in a blue region, it joins on with these. Uh, 
and that couldn't be blue. Maybe it's about whether this can be blue. I, I think it's more about this region. Oh, there's a five in one of those two cells, just noticed. Maybe it's about this region, which now can't be a five. It also, or the, the digit in it can't be a five, therefore the region can't be of size five. The region also can't be a size one. So the only odd possibility here is a three now. What would happen to that? Well, it would grow. I don't know. I don't think that's worth thinking about. These even bits. There's, there, that's quite a lot of stuff. Now, come on, think about green. Is green blue or is it orange? I think it can be blue and then it's a six and then this is an orange seven I don't see why that's not right why couldn't it be oh this would be part of a six if this was blue and this would be part of a seven and it would be one two four and that would be a six and this would be a three five pair is that that's not it's not of any interest. So this seven region, where would it go? One, two, three. These blue regions would all have to grow. Ah. Uh, no, I, I was going to say this region would have to grow into this cage, but I'm not sure about that. It could be part of a two region going down there. Sorry, I do find this a very difficult puzzle to get to any grips with. Okay, let's think about this cage, which must add up to at least three, because it must have a one and a two in it. So it's part of at least a three region. Now, it can't be part of this region. Could be. Could be a seven like that. Don't see why not yet. Um, oh, crumbs. I'm sorry. I'm just missing. There could easily be something very obvious in this puzzle. I mean, it took me a long time to work out those were blue cells. But the trouble is I'm just not managing to bound any, any region other than that one. You're going to have to have a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5 and a 6 and a 7 and an 8. How do you do this? Peter Joe, what are you doing to me? Okay, these two will add up to a number between 3 and 8. I don't think it'll... It won't be eight, because if those were blue, we would pick up other cells on the way up to the eight. Okay, if this was seven, this cage would contain one, two, four, and that would be a six. Is that, is that of any, if this was a seven, where would it go? It could even grab this cage. That's why I'm not ruling out seven from being there. Oh no, it couldn't, because that would shut off this cell into a region on its own, which is impossible. Ah, okay, so if this is a seven, it doesn't come out into this cage. So it, and it has to leave, I don't know, it must come out up here. Then those join into the same region. 
So then this putative 7 has to come up to at least here. Now, these, therefore, must grow somewhere. Ah, if this is a 7, that's a 6. So these couldn't grow to there. So they would have to grow up to here and be part of the 8 region. Okay, this is getting interesting. If this is a 7, these have to grow up and join the 8 region. And I think the only way for that to occur... Oh, that is very clever and interesting. Right. I want to allege... that this seven region would look like that big sort of Y. T, Y, I don't know what shape you'd call that. Uh, but I'm now... Well, I think that's falsifiable, that being a seven region, because this would be blue it would have to come out, it would join with that, that's now three, so it's got to be an even number, so it's got to join with this cage, and then it will reach this one, and be six, but this is the six region, and we can't go bigger than six, or we're into the seven region, or the eight region. So, it wouldn't work to be exactly like that. Now, I've then had the thought that this top cell could be in the 8 region. The 8 region could look like that. With the 7 region inside it, thus taking the bottom cell. I mean, this is quite complicated, but I don't think that works either. And it's because these cells would all be orange and that. And they would... That we'd have the one region. So this one can't be a one region, so it has to grow. To avoid being two, three regions, it'll grow into this, and this becomes a five region. But, oh, this would also be orange because of the blue six region we'd have here. Okay, that doesn't work because then it would have to be another seven region. We've had a seven region down here. So, I don't know. I mean, is this conclusive enough? I'm pretty sure based on the possibilities that one can imagine for this being a seven region. It can't grow into this cage because it cuts that off. If it, therefore it grows up here to at least there, that forces this to be blue. I mean, it can't grow around the corner or it cuts that off. So this becomes blue. must grow another piece which isn't there, or it joins into this six region. So the piece it must grow is up here, so it'll join to the eight region somehow. So this would become part of the eight region. The only way for it to do that, and this, to, this seven region to grow enough, I'm just rechecking logic I've just done, but it has to be done. It can't grow two more cells, Oh, maybe I haven't considered... Yes, it can't grow two more cells up here because that'll leave these three as part of a region which will then crash into this and make it at least six. That's no good. Okay, so it could only grow one more cell up here. And we did work out that would be here. That gives us this eight shape which is theoretically feasible, but that breaks up here with the orange shape that would be formed. Wow! <coughs> it's good enough for me to use. If there is a simpler way of seeing that this is clearly a six cage, do let me know in the comments. But that is the way I've seen it.
that's complicated. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we'd have got such enthusiastic recommendations if that's necessary. Uh, sorry. Yeah, no, this is the six region. That's the seven region. This is right. So that's orange. And this is part of the seven region. Okay. This is the six. Ah, oh, we've got five cells in the six region. Now I've seen that before. So it doesn't go into this region. And this is a different region. And this is orange. Because if it went into that region, we'd be up to eight blue cells. So that's orange. This is either part of three or five or even seven. Although I have a feeling it can't be, but I don't know yet. Now, where's the sixth cell in this region? Well, it's not there. Because that would shut off a cell that, that couldn't be in any region. So this must also be orange because it's not in that six region oh and we've got the rule about opposite parities between different regions so this is an odd number i'd forgotten that rule it's worth bearing in mind now the sixth cell for this region it's not there or the region becomes seven so it's either here or here if it was here if it wasn't here this is orange as well. Then this has become four and it's got to get bigger. It then couldn't join to the seven region because it would be too big. So it would have to be part of a five region. These would have to add up to five. Oh, they do add up to an odd number, whatever, because we're in an orange region. So that cell is two, four or six. Um... This is part of a six region. Oh, so this cell is orange. That's just definite now. Because the region can't grow to there or it would take in that. Now we've got this cell getting hidden unless it, well, probably. Gosh, I don't know. Um, we've got a two, four, six triple in the row. So those are three and five. That's been available quite a while, hadn't seen it. This has to be an odd number because it's orange next to a blue cell and it can't be one or three, so that is an actual five. There's our second digit in the grid after 23 minutes. I think I got that one after one second. Now, that doesn't tell me anything, of course. Actually placing digits in this puzzle doesn't do a lot. Not, not at this stage. Maybe we go back to thinking about this. It can't be a one because we've had the one region. It can't be a five by Sudoku. If it was orange, if it was in an orange region, it would have to be a three. No, it could be part of the seven. No, we can't put a seven in the, in the cell. So it could be a three, but that's impossible because that would grow out into either that region or that region. So this is blue, weird. This digit is therefore telling its K, its region size. And it's either two, four, or six. If it's two, it's like that or like that. If it's four, it's like that. And if it's six, it's like that. Don't know. Oh, it's not six. We've got six down here. So that is two or four. Oh, that's a pair. That gives us a... Digit, unexpected digit. That's a two, four pair. Oh, sorry, this is, but that's been obvious for ages. That's a six, this isn't. But again, I don't think getting the digits is all that helpful. Now we've got a two, four pair there. That's not a two. Ah, oh, that's now definitely one or three. So if this is orange, oh, well, we know this is four or six, that's even. Oh, that doesn't stop it having a border with any of those cells. Oh, it's not four or six. We've got a two, four pair. That's a six. It's Sudoku in this puzzle suddenly. Very unexpectedly in this particular puzzle to suddenly get some Sudoku. That's one or three. So that can be in a different region from either of those. In fact, it is in the same region as one of them because it's either orange or blue. Knowledge bomb there from Cracking the Cryptic. We love to provide you with those. 
Um, yeah, this bordering thing, it's very, this is a three or a five. I think this whole, the pattern in this puzzle might actually be odd even, odd even, odd even throughout, which in a way doesn't help at all with the bordering thing. Now that has to be a different parity to those, so it is three or five. This is even, two, four or six. I feel like I could perhaps risk colouring the whole grid in, in, or pencil marking the whole grid in these sorts of parity based numbers, but I'm not going to do that because that would be madness. So I still don't know about this. And now this is a seven region. This is in an eight. Does it have to join? This is in a two or a four. It's not a six region. So it doesn't go out through there. Ooh, if it's a two, this. And that could just be the three region. And it's quite interesting. If that's a two, this digit is a four. And therefore this region adds, is, is this cage total adds up to five and the region has to be at least five cells. But that would have become orange and that would become orange. We would know it would be those five cells. If that's a four, this blue region has to look exactly like that. And then, oh, that's really, really interesting. Look at that. Okay, I do like this. If this is a two, a blue two, this digit is a four. This cage total has to go up to five. It can't be a seven. Oh, wait. No, yeah, it can't be a seven because it would take eight cells to join onto that. This cage total would go up to five. And if that was a two... The two couldn't be placed horizontally, or those would both become orange and join that far too big region together. So the two would be placed vertically, those would both be orange cells, and the five shape would be confined like that. If that's a four, it mustn't go up to here or it'll be at least five, so it must be confined to that two by two. And then this shape must only be three cells because the maximum it could be is four and it's an odd number and it would end here and in both of those possibilities this is not in the orange shape that is a blue cell and completes the six shape and this is orange and must grow because we've had the one region now it's not going to be part of the seven region which is over here so this is either three or five and this is either three or five and we don't actually know because this is either two or four and allows both of those possibilities. But we've either got double orange there and double blue here. In fact, this is always blue. And it borders that cell. So it's a three or a five. It's an odd number. This is a six because we need a six in this row. I don't think that helps me determine its colour. This puzzle would be crazy. So they, they, that pair is the same. They're either orange or blue. And they're the opposite to whatever that is. And that's either part of this seven region or this growing blue region. Now, we've either had two or four there. This is either in two or four. If it's in two... It's impossible. Oh, that is amazingly lovely. This cannot be in a two region. It's clearly not in the six region. Ah, it could be in the eight region. But it can't be the two region because it wouldn't be allowed to go up there or it would join onto that. It would have to be flat and then this would have to be a four region, but it would join onto the two region. So this is not in a two region. It's either in a four or the eight. If it's in a four, it joins those and then mustn't go north or it will join on again. So the four would be like that. Now that is possible. It would be separated from the eight. That is possible. 
If it's in the 8 region, it must head up towards the top. Okay, let's think about this. This is either three or five. If it was only three, all of these would be blue. And we'd have six of the eight region done. I don't know what that would do. If this was five, it would have to grow up somewhere. Okay, maybe I have to think about, can this be orange? It would have to be a number three. That's probably what it is anyway, even if it's blue. And what will it join to? Will it join to the seven or the five? I don't know. Oh, this is difficult there we haven't re oh this is an eight cage so it doesn't have a six in it oh, i hadn't thought about the numbers in this for a while so it's either one two five five two one one three four or four three one i can't really choose between those Six. six is in one of those cells. I don't really have any handle on six. Okay, maybe I've got to go back to thinking about this stuff. Oh, this adds up to either five or three, so it doesn't have a five in. So that's the digit five. And that's now a three, six pair. is a two that's not interesting three six pair here so everything else here is one two four or five I don't know that's that doesn't seem very helpful oh uh, come on mark come up with something now don't know whether to go that three cage or this one. If this was a four, that is a four. Those are two and one. That works fine. If this is a two. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Okay, if this is a two, those are orange. This is a five shape. That has become a four by Sudoku and that needs to be a one. If this is a four, that is a two and a one. So this is always a one. And that places one in the corner. I mean, it's, you know, I call that interesting. Oh yeah, no, okay. That fixes where the one is in the eight cage. So it does get me up to the top of the grid. This is now four or five to make up the eight cage. This is not one or six. That's a one by Sudoku. That's now a three by Sudoku. That's a five, that's a three. That's a five, that's a three, that's a two, that's a three. That's not a two. These are from four, five, six. We've got that three, six pair and a one there. These are from two, four, five. Now, are we going to ever run into a problem with the parity alternation? Lots of pencil marking done now. Still, I mean, I, I don't know about that. It's all going to depend what colour this ends up being. And is it in the seven region? That somehow seems to be... It, it seems extremely hard to me to determine the shapes of the eight and the seven. Okay, here's why this can't be... These can't be double orange. Because this would be a five region looking like that. But this... Okay, I'm not... 
Yeah, it doesn't quite work. All of these would have to be blue, <clears throat> which adds up to exactly eight, but leaves those cells just because of what orange regions would have to touch. No, it's, I don't think I'm right. No, okay, I, I sort of am. I don't know. And I don't even know if it's worth working out. So I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to carry on with that. Um, two, four pair. Let's think about Sudoku again. That's not a five. Oh, that's two or four. That's the other of two or four from what's in the cage, because that must have an even digit. So that's not four. Again, this just doesn't help, especially if we're going to end up populating the grid in a checkerboard of odds and evens, which I'm sure we are. So I need to still focus on whether this is a three or a five, how this seven forms. These are either both orange or both blue. That is then the other colour. So if this was blue, what's happening here? It, if that's blue, this is orange and that's a blue too. So this would have to grow out and would get to it four. And that's where it would have to stop. Yes, because it couldn't join to the eight or you couldn't fit a four in at the top anywhere. Ah, okay, this cannot be part of the eight. Yes, it can. It would join there to the eight. No, that wouldn't work. Because the shape on the right would end up being six. Wow, okay, this is it, I think. If this was blue, that would be the two regions. So this would have to grow out. It would become four. Well, I'm going to say that it couldn't join onto the eight because there would only be one cell to join to. If it joined there, that would leave six orange on the left. If it joined there, that would not leave room for the four shape. Actually, I don't think it would leave room for the four shape anyway. So that would be a four shape. So if this is blue, that's the four shape. Actually, I think this is possible. Then these become orange to separate that. They can't join to the, f to the shape on the left. They would have to join here. And then you just need one more cell, which I think thing would probably have to be that one okay that does work uh, that's annoying because I wanted to rule it out but if this is blue this is a four shape is that an s tetromino looks well it looks a bit zeddy if this is not blue if this is orange this is the four cell blue oh then the blue here still has to grow out that's always blue i'm sorry i haven't observed what is fairly clear there so this is at least three. Oh, um uh, is that the four and then yeah if that was the two The only way for this, we know this is the eight from the cage total. The only way for this to be the four is not to go north because it would join to the eight. It must go there. So if this is the two, that's blue. And that was obvious for another reason. But if this is the four, then this does become part of the eight. Then the two has to be hidden there.
Yeah, that's interesting. So this is where the two goes, if this is the four. If that's the two, this is the four. What's happening to these? Are these always orange? This is never part of the eight, is it? Hang on, hang on, I've, I've lost track now. If that's the four, oh no, that's the two, and then this is the eight, all joined up somehow. I don't know which is right. I sort of do, uh, no, I know where this eight would join up now. It would have to join up there and there, or there and there to leave a five shape over this side. Is there something I've, I'm just failing to deduce from these parity digits? Like it seems very unlikely that this is going to be a three with a four here. That would put a two here. Just because that would create very few opportunities for parity alternation. that was the four this would be a, okay if that was a four this would be a two this would be a three cell region that would be the four this would be odd this would be part of the eight cell region so that's if this is a four well yeah the eight cell region has to leave a five up there Okay, that doesn't work, and this is complicated, I think. If that was, if this was a four, that's a two. So that fixes that region. That makes this a four cell region, and it makes this orange. This shape is going to grow into the eight cell region, but it's going to leave a five and a seven at the top in the orange. It's got to take that cell which is seven big and now I'm thinking that if that four is next to a two there that has to be in the same shape And you've got a problem with a five here and a three there in different shapes, just from the size of that shape. So this cannot be a four. Wow. I mean, this is, this is hard stuff. That's a two. That's a four. So we've got six there. I might finish the Sudoku and still, oh, that's three in the corner. Good to see you, three. That's four. That's three. That's five. That, I think I'm going to finish the numbers and be told I'm right when I still have very little idea about the shapes. But, okay, before finishing off the, no the numbers then, because I don't want to get the tick, that is now a two shape because of this two. So those yellow have become orange. That is a five shape, which will agree with the four that I'm going to put in there. This becomes blue. That now has to be a four shape from what we worked out earlier. Because if it joined with this, there, there's nowhere to put in the four shape in the grid. Therefore, these two are now orange to separate them. They can't join into this five. Uh, this is a three shape, actually, because that's a five shape. So those are blue to hive it off. That's got to be blue in the corner because we've already had the one. This is an eight shape. So that's blue. This is orange to join up the cells here. Obviously, this now has to be orange to finish off. That's blue. And look at these shapes. We've got an eight with one, two, five in its cage. We've got a seven with one, two, four in its cage. We've got a five with a one, four in its cage, a six with one, two, three in its cage, a two with two in its cage. So the cage rules have all worked. Now, I want to check the 
orthogon orthogonally adjacent cells in different regions are of different parity. So that 3 is bounding a 2, 4, and a 6. That 2 is bounding a 5 and a 3. The 1 and a 4, 6 and a 3, they're all opposite parity. This 2 is seeing a 3 and a 5. That 4 is seeing a 5 and a 5. That 5 is good. That 4, 5 boundary is good. This 3 is good. That 5 is good. This 1 is good. And there we go. And I think we did see this pattern of even parities in bishop cells throughout. We did. So maybe that was always going to happen, but it does. There's the answer. Wow, what a crazy puzzle. That is very hard. Oh, I never used the, uh, the region drawing skills, did I? Sorry, just forgot didn't really matter in the solve of the puzzle there we go there's the regions drawn what a bizarre bizarre puzzle very difficult I think but very interesting of course thank you Peter Cho thank you for uh, sending it to us and thank you guys for watching we will see you again tomorrow bye for now